Let's begin. In what film classic did a tornado or twister appear, along with a girl named Dorothy? I'm waiting. Uh, Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz is correct. What colour was Mao's little book? Uh, yellow. You are wrong. Red, however, is the correct response. The OSS was the U.S. intelligence organization that operated during World War II. What was the full title of this organization? Operational Special... Incorrect. The Office of Strategic Services, however, is the correct <laughs> response. Don't waste my time. Of course I'm not. Whereas period epochs and ages are divisions of time in which field of study. Geology. Geology is correct. Hey! Donnerstag is German for which day? I'm waiting. Friday. You are incorrect. Thursday, however, is a correct response. In 1990, what item of kit was made compulsory for all footballers by FIFA? Uh, shin pads. Shin pads is correct. Hey, this is great, I am. Which religion was founded by Laozi? Uh, totally. Taoism is correct. Yay. Score eight Yay. points. Which board game would a tabler play? Uh, I'll have a guess. Backgammon. Backgammon is correct. Yes. Lucky guess. I know. Which country is ruled by the House of Grimaldi? Uh, we haven't got all day, you know. I'll have a guess, Mo. My co is correct. <laughs> what type of food is dill? Uh, pickles. Incorrect. Herb, however, is the correct response. In Roman numerals, what is the letter M with a bar over it? Incorrect. One million, however, is the correct response. Apart from red balls, how many coloured balls are there in snooker? You're wasting time. Incorrect. Six, however, is the correct response. Mm, I'm rubbish now. Your time is up. You have scored minus one point. What happened? How do you feel? Oh, I feel cool. So I didn't expect to get uh, all the answers, so I'm happy. I don't think you've got the hang of this game, human. At the end of tonight's show, Emma Brady takes the lead with an unimpressive 53 points. And she enters my leaderboard in joint seventh place with Gary Woodward to chance to, to win a seven-night Thompson Gold holiday. That's all from the machine. Until we meet again. Our protégé Lewis Hamilton has a chance to win the Formula Renault title at Donington Park, but can he do it? Motorsport UK, after Cybernet. You're watching Cybernet with me, Steve Truitt. Get ready to meet a beautiful place on Gay Street, classic adventure, and survive to Silent Hill. It's ahead of the pack, Cybernet. Let's kick off this week's show with a new kind of superhero for the GameCube. At first glance, this average Joe doesn't appear too impressive, but when he transforms into beautiful Joe, he can pack quite a wallop. In many ways, Beautiful Joe plays like an old-school platform action title. It's presented in a long, outdated 2D style and is comprised primarily of fighting, double jumping, and collecting items. Once you dig beneath the surface, however, you'll discover an absorbing adventure designed with a unique comic book art style and slick visual effects. The origin of our hero takes place at the cinema, where Joe's girlfriend is suddenly warped into the movie. 
seconds later, Joe is also transported into the film where he's magically given fantastic powers and a snazzy red outfit. So Joe must use his new abilities to save his damsel in distress and beat up the bad guys. From here on out, it's a level-based fight for survival where you'll mash mean mutant and pulverize powerful bosses. And thanks to Joe's special powers, there's more here than just a basic beat-em-up. For instance, you can slow down time to dodge attacks and deflect missiles, or speed up time for a rapid-fire assault of punches and kicks. This gives you an amazing number of possible attack strategies that should please any Kung Fu fan. Joe can also display an amazing array of acrobatic twists and turns as he grabs floating power-ups and heart-refilling hamburgers. The game's most striking feature, however, is the cel-shaded graphical art style. The bright color palette is gorgeous and the backgrounds are lush and imaginative. Despite the cartoonish appearance, this game contains some very challenging moments. Fortunately, the controls are responsive, and there's a kid's difficulty setting for the really tough spots. Our only complaints are that it's light on story, and the levels are somewhat repetitive. Plus, it's a relatively short game. It might be retro in style, but Beautiful Joe proves that a 2D side-scroller can distinctive and rewarding experience. Way to go, Joe. You're our kind of hero. If you want to be king of the road in Big Mother Truckers for the Xbox, you're going to have to let loose your wicked side. Fortunately, Cybernet is here to help release your evil urges. So grab a pen and jot down this malevolent cheat. At the cheat menu, enter in Varley. That's V-A-R-L-E and Y. No one's going to mess with you now because we've just given you the evil truck. That's right, you're the master of disaster, the creator of chaos, the purveyor of pandemonium. <laughs> just don't forget to wear your seatbelt. This is the end of my summer vacation, when I have to get in all the playing time I can before my school year begins. Luckily on my street, I have plenty of friends with a lot of interesting hobbies. Won't you join me for a game on the PlayStation 2? I begin by counterpart's character customization mode. Then it's time to play. So I'll walk along my street and talk to friends. My game is RC Racing. Only Hepcats with a tough RC car can play. There are seven mini-games that make up my street. Here I can take my magnetized marble track smaller marbles through the goal. The one with the most points, or I for the checkered flag with RC Racing. Power-ups like oil slicks, nitros, and even missiles help me get ahead. If I want more physical activity, there's volleyball, where I can bump, set, and spike my way to victory. And for more zany fun, there's chicken herding. Just keep those big, coop-destroying pigs away. Black and black thing. To cause some mischief, I can race my lawnmowers through the yard. But I better watch out for those flowers, or else risk losing valuable points. And to get my mind in shape, there's chemistry. This Tetris-style game matches and then zaps colored molecules before they harden to stone. Finally, there's dodgeball. Loved by some, dreaded by most, it's the game where I try to hit opponents with a ball until they're eliminated. Sadly, the mini-games of my street are far too simple for almost everyone while the platform hopping puzzles may be a bit too confusing for younger gamers. While combining party and platform games is a nifty concept, it just isn't as it should be. Fortunately, my street is someplace you don't want to live. Huh, maybe I should move.
Ever since the Wright brothers stunned the world in 1903 with their amazing flying machine, mankind has strived to conquer the skies. And now you can experience the thrill of controlling some of the most famous airplanes of the past 100 years with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2004, a century of flight for the PC, our game of the week. As the name implies, this title celebrates a century of aeronautic innovation. Practically the entire history of civilian aviation is represented. Not only will you be able to fly in famous airplanes of yesteryear, such as Charles Lindbergh's Spirit of St. Louis, you'll have access to a vast amount of written information. It's a fascinating subject and one worth exploring. But of course, the most important aspect of the flight simulator titles is the accurate depiction of airplanes. Fifteen contemporary planes and nine vintage aircrafts are included, all rendered with ultra-realistic precision. So you'll cruise the skyways in everything from a Boeing 747 to a Robinson R-22 helicopter. Once you've chosen an airplane to fly, you can take off and land in more than 24,000 airports. These all feature much more detail than seen in previous editions. Other realistic touches include the game's dynamic weather conditions and the virtual cockpits which are much more interactive and functional. Your first piloting experience might be a bit bumpy, but fortunately there's an in-depth flight school to get you up to speed. We also highly recommend some good controller peripherals like a joystick and rudder pedals to get the most out of this title. Then it's off you go into the wild blue yonder. There have been a slew of flight sim contenders over the years, but this series continues to soar high above the competition. Aviation buffs will love a century of flight, and that's why it's our Game of the Week. Since first looking up at the night sky, man has dreamed of living amongst the stars. Some experts believe that in the near future, we'll be able to inhabit an alien world and make it our own. Well, the future is here. It's time to build your very own space colony for the PC. Immediately, it becomes clear this title has many similarities with the hugely popular Sim series. Once you find a world for your colony, it's up to you to build it from a barren wasteland to a thriving city metropolis. As creator, you're responsible for your colony's aesthetic and financial upkeep. That means besides keeping things in order, you'll have to find ways to keep money coming in. So remember to mine your planet for resources. And what better way to attract tourists than with a space-age gambling casino. But it doesn't stop there. You'll also be responsible for your population's morale. Ignore them and they'll pick fights, argue, get depressed, and eventually go crazy. Nurture them and they will work hard for you, become friends, and maybe even fall in love. With over 100 different buildings at your disposal, Space Colony can keep both the creative and strategic sides of your brain busy for days. The graphics are colorful and cool, and the interface is easy to manage. Plus, the overall gameplay, though familiar, is sprinkled with enough original elements to make this a fresh experience. What other sim would have you managing a hotel while fending off an alien attack? If you love The Sims and you're looking for a whole new world to conquer, Space Colony might just be the getaway you're looking for. If you've been playing Rise of Nations on the PC and found that your enemies are getting the best of you, relax. We've got a cheat that'll have them begging for mercy. So grab a pen and jot this down. During gameplay, press enter and type in the words Cheat Nuke. That's C-H-E-A-T space N-U-K-E. 
and E. You've just been given the power to crush anything in your path because you now have unlimited nuclear weapons. That's right, simply place your pointer over the building you want destroyed, and with one click of the mouse, blammo! We hope you enjoy this cheat, and good luck! Coming up, we survive a desert storm, run from giant tight, and get scared on Silent Hill. A lot of couples who've been together for a long time go off sex. Oh, I've never been on it. Meet Hazel. It can be a wonderful thing, can sex, Hazel. I'm sure it can. A woman with everything. Who's reading Lady Chatley's Lover? Who still isn't getting enough. Have you tried that chocolate body pain? Meet Peter. So how do you feel about talking to a sex therapist? Is that what you are? He's having a few. So when was the last time you and Hazel had sex? Four or five years. Problems. She threw up after we'd finished. Meet Alona. I might as well tell you I'm a sex therapist. Does that make you an expert? She likes it. How many times a week do you do it? Every, Every day. day. When you talk dirty. My God, he's got a big one. From the writer of Fat Friends. Can you help me? I'll do my best. Comes a new drama. Where the hell are you going? Yeah. I don't know. About sex. We have unresolved issues. Unresolved issues? Between the sheets. How come my family's so screwed up? Monday at nine. Welcome back to part two of Cybernet. A return trip back in time to the Middle East. Grab your rifle and prepare for some military action with Conflict Desert Storm 2 back to Baghdad for the PC, Xbox, and PS2. This sequel takes you to the military conflict that transpired in Iraq back in 1991. You play as either the American Delta Force or the British SAS personnel. The teams function almost identically with only slight variations, most notably in the voice acting. This is squad-based action, meaning you'll command a four-member team. There's the assault rifle-wielding team leader, the sniper, the demolitions expert, and the heavy machine gunner. You'll then set out on a 10 mission campaign to bring down a ruthless dictator. The original Conflict Desert Storm was a disappointing title plagued with numerous faults. So we were surprised that a sequel would be released just a year later. Fortunately, the developers at Pivotal Games made numerous improvements making this a better game. For instance, alternating control of your teammates will give you a tactical advantage. So if done correctly, you should be able to progress with little casualties. But if you allow the computer AI to control your team, more often than not, they'll go down in a blaze of glory. So practice up those command skills and soon enough you'll be taking that heroic trip home. The graphics have improved as well. The environments are no longer bland, but filled with enough detail to make the action believable. Vehicle combat was added on some levels to break up the flow. On the Xbox version, four-player co-op is available. Also, the targeting system has been tweaked, allowing for more accurate hits. Even with all these additions, we still feel the game falls a bit short of the mark. Each updated aspect suffers from some minor technical problems, resulting in a title that simply needs more polish. There's some fun to be had with Conflict Desert Storm 2, but if we go back to Baghdad for a third tour, let's hope to give it the development time this weighty subject matter deserves. Love to drive, so to us having access to every car in Apex for the Xbox is like being a kid in a candy store. If you feel this way too, then grab a pen and jot down this awesome cheat. In dream mode, start a new game and enter your name as Reality. That's R-E-A-L-I-T-N-Y. 
because you've just unlocked all the production cars in this game. That's right, feel free to take your favorite automobiles for a spin around these exciting... If you're a fan of cars like we are, you couldn't ask for a better cheat. Now hit the road! version of Dungeons and Dragons was, for the most part, the very first role-playing game. As this form of gaming moved into the computer age, D&D was there every step of the way in such hits as Baldur's Gate and Neverwinter Nights. Ness has gone back to where it all began in the Temple Elemental Eve, a classic Greyhawk adventure for the PC. Based on a module from the original Dungeons and Dragons game, this title casts you as the leader of a band of brave warriors. You begin by creating your party, choosing from a wide variety of species, races, and abilities. There are literally dozens of skills and classes to choose from. In addition, there are hundreds of various forms of magic available, including cleric domain spells. As with any game of this sort, it's good to have someone who's a mighty warrior, another who's a quick shot, and a magic user. Of course, all will have to work together in order to survive. Hardcore fans will be pleased that the game follows the third edition rules. The combat is turn-based, making for slower, though more strategic combat. And with a slew of monsters inhabiting the temple, you can bet there will be plenty of combat. There are over a hundred different enemies in all, ranging from goblins to hill giants and even demons. Unfortunately, the gameplay is quite buggy. At several points, it becomes far too easy to become separated from your group. Also, at times, spells and weapons don't quite work as well as you'd like them to. But despite these flaws, the Temple of Elemental Evil is a solid RPG experience. While it may not quite be in the same league as the Baldur's Gate series, it is a faithful adaptation of the game that started it all. Okay, it's time for Cybernet's Top 10 PC Games Chart. At 10, controlling an armada of spaceships is no longer just for Darth Vader. Now you can command your own fleet in Homeworld 2. Your Sims get some much needed public transportation enhancements as the traffic clears for SimCity 4 Rush Hour at 9. At 8, the King of the Lynx is back, sinking putts and staying out of the rough with Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2004. Storming in at number 7, we can't get enough of the great new vehicles located in Battlefield 1942. The Sims take center stage as Hollywood superstars in their latest PC expansion. Hey, how about an autograph? At number 5, much more exciting than any school we've ever seen, we're desperate to enroll in Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy. That's no earthquake, it's just the dreaded shaking of the titans in Age of Mythology, stomping to our fourth spot. At 3, protecting the world from any and all threats, we mobilize our units for Command and Conquer General Zero Hour. Time to fight another famous battle of World War II, we suit up for Medal of Honor Assault Breakthrough at 2. But was there any doubt we were one of our favorite FPS titles? Halo Combat Evolved is our PC number one. take you back to a legendary era when powerful kings and magical monsters roamed the land. It's time to enter Age of Mythology, the Titans, for the PC. As the first expansion to last year's popular real-time strategy game, Age of Mythology, the Titans brings you a new story, new characters, and even a completely new army. In campaign mode, you are Castor, the son of the previous storyline's character, the heroic Arkantos. However, unlike your father who led the Greeks, you must now lead a new army, the Atlanteans, against the other races in the game. Through a bit of trickery, Castor ends up freeing the evil titans from their imprisonment and now must work with his allies to stop their onslaught. The Atlanteans play a little bit faster than the other armies. This allows many advantages such as renewable god powers and the ability to make heroes of any normal unit. 
Although we're happy to have the Atlanteans to control, they look a bit too similar to the Greeks. We would have preferred the contrast of an army from a different culture. As you probably guessed, one of the best additions this expansion adds is the Titans themselves. These brutes are destructive, horrible, and evil. Well, I guess that one's not so bad. You can summon these Titans when your army is fully advanced, and believe us, if someone has a Titan and you don't, the battle will be over very quickly. We can't get enough of Age of Mythology the Titans. As game expansions go, it has everything we like. We hope that more additions will be made for this absorbing series with more armies, more magic, and of course, a few more of these big guys. The Silent Hill series has crawled out from the shadow of its humble beginnings and taken form as a gaming series giant. The latest installment has been scaring players on the PS2, and now PC owners have a new reason to fear the dark in Silent Hill 3. Although they share similar settings and visual creepiness, there's not much to tie the installments of this series together. Each introduces a new character who finds themselves stuck in a mysterious town called Silent Hill. In this edition, you'll play as a young girl named Heather who wakes up in an abandoned mall not knowing how she got there. To make matters worse, the place is crawling with all sorts of horrifying creatures. Like a mystery movie, the pieces of the plot fall into place as Heather explores the town and puts the clues together. She also runs into a few other human inhabitants, including a secretive detective who offers our heroine more questions than answers. Unlike most other survival horror games, the Silent Hill series has always emphasized atmosphere over gore. And this chapter proudly boasts some of the creepiest levels yet. Explicit in detail and rich with atmosphere, this will have you looking over your shoulder during those late night gaming sessions. Despite some new features, there's still room for improvement in this chapter on the hill. While the controls are better than other popular horror games, like Resident Evil, they still take some getting used to. Also, since we don't get to know the main character until much later in the game, it's harder to get as involved. Overall though, this is another super sequel to the scary series. Let's just hope we can survive the experience. We'd like to thank you for joining us for another amazing blast of video game action. Cybernet will be back soon with even more fantastic games and features from around the world. And don't forget to keep in touch via email. So until next time, here's more dynamic driving from F-Zero GX, compliments of Cybernet. It's Cybernet. Welcome to the show. We begin this week with probably the most unusual weapon we've seen in quite some time. An egg. But don't let that scramble your feelings for the wild and crazy adventure known as Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg on the GameCube. The evil crows have imprisoned the chicken elders who, aside from no longer being free-range chickens, are forbidden from coaxing the sun out of its slumber. This leaves all of Morningland in total darkness. So a young boy named Billy Hatcher is given the legendary rooster suit to help. With its power, he can control the magical eggs, rescue the elders, and rid Morning Land of the crows once and for all. If the bright and colorful graphics look familiar, that's because Billy Hatcher was developed by the creators of Sonic the Hedgehog. In fact, this is the first all-new platform game from the folks at Sonic Team since the glory days of the Sega Saturn system. And this title does look beautiful. They definitely chose a sunny palette when picking the game's colors. 
Your primary task is to collect magical eggs and use them to fight and solve puzzles through six unique stages like fire stage and ice stage. To make use of an egg, simply run up to it and Billy will automatically push it. Then you can use it to either roll over enemies or throw it at them. Each time you form an action with the egg, it will grow. Eventually, with a cock-a-doodle-doo, the egg will hatch, releasing a magical beast that can help you. Controlling these eggs is a bit tricky. If you try to cut back and head in the opposite direction, Billy will let go of the egg. This can be frustrating, especially in times of a fierce fight. Also, lining the egg up to throw will often result in missed targets. Master these controls, though, and soon enough you'll be ruling the roost. Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg is a unique, though limited title that could have benefited from more variation. Fortunately, the multiplayer mode more than makes up for these shortcomings. So if you're looking for a lighthearted adventure on the GameCube, don't worry, this one's all it's cracked up to be. If you've been playing SimCity 4 on the PC, you no doubt realize that money helps. Luckily, the bank of Cybernet is always open, so grab a pen and jot down this rewarding cheat. Press Control and X to bring up the cheat entry box and type in Weakness Pays as one word. That's W-E-A-K-N-E-S-S-P-A-Y and S. Consider this your lucky day because we've just given you an extra thousand dollars in your treasury. That's right, use this money to buy anything you need. Compliments of, well, you know where. The professors of Peculiar are back. This time, however, these weird friends have left the Xbox for the Game Boy Advance. But while the console it's played on may be smaller, their adventure has never been so big. This is Oddworld Munch's Odyssey. Munch, the Gabbit, and his sidekick Abe are leading an offbeat revolution to save the world. With their sacred land in jeopardy of being destroyed by the greedy Gluckins, the strange pair team up to teach those rascals a lesson. You'll be in command of your enemies using the power of chant. Of course, there are also plenty of wacky weapons and power-ups to use along the way. Fortunately, no matter what method you use to take out your opponents, the controls are responsive and accurate. Some of the objectives and puzzles are slightly unclear, but we think Oddworld, though admittedly, um, odd, is a fun place to visit. now move from abnormally ugly looking characters to an abnormally beautiful one. Everyone's favorite blonde who has everything, Barbie, is back on the GBA. And this time she's traded in her pink Corvette for a horse adventure in Blue Ribbon Race. It's the National Grand Horse Charity and you're invited. It's time to saddle up and go on an amazing cross-country race to the finish line. You'll ride through lush countryside and compete in exciting events using skill and speed to dodge obstacles like rocks, hay bales, and even forest animals. One of this game's strongest attributes is the fantastic horse animations. These beautiful beasts gallop, run, and jump with solid fluidity. Sadly, controlling them leaves a bit to be desired. This can be extremely frustrating, especially for the young girls wanting to take this one for a ride. Blue Ribbon Race suffers from the same faults that some critics direct at Barbie herself. All style and no substance. This one just doesn't gallop away with our hearts. There's nothing like the thrill of racing an ATV. Being able to not only navigate, but skillfully maneuver around rugged terrain is a feat not for the weak of heart. 
Hold on tight and get ready for the awesome power of ATV Off-Road Fury 2 for the PS2, our game of the week. The second installment in this series actually has a lot in common with its previous release. It combines arcade play with some Tony Hawk style big air stunts. Of course, all of this has been amplified from the last title, resulting in an over-the-top game promising to fill the need of extreme enthusiasts. But does it succeed? You'll customize your rider's apparel, then choose from over 20 authentic all-terrain vehicles. That said, it's time to take it to the road, or the off-road. The four modes include the standard nationals and supercross races, which require you to compete against opponents on either indoor or outdoor tracks. And then there's a freestyle mode to let you perform wild and crazy stunts. The real fun, however, is in the enduro mode. Here you'll race across a vast and rugged terrain, cutting your own path to the next checkpoint. This free roaming aspect adds a great deal of challenging replayability. A huge portion of the game is experienced by pulling off tricks. When you see that the preload meter is filled, press the correct button and you can grab some big air. We could have used a few more tricks on offer, but this is still a good addition. If you think you have what it takes to compete with real life opponents, there's a multiplayer option which lets you take on up to three buddies. And if there's no one else around, you can go online and race your virtual friends. Overall, ATV Off-Road Fury 2 is an entertaining title. While we would have liked more attention paid to the trick portions, there's no denying the white-knuckle excitement these four-wheeled monsters of the dirt provide. We look forward to the next installment of this up-and-coming franchise, checking in as our Game of the Week. The latest season of the National Hockey League is in full swing, which can only mean one thing. Another edition of NHL 2004 is here. So let's skate our way to victory on the PC and all three consoles. This series consistently receives high marks for excellence, and this title continues that winning tradition. The gameplay is as sharp as ever, highlighted by realistic player animations, authentic arenas, and tight controls. Plus, as usual, league information is updated so you can recreate last season's Stanley Cup Finals between the Anaheim Mighty Ducks and the New Jersey Devils. Although the game engine remains basically the same as last year, there are several upgrades. The control system now includes a two-button passing option to help you get the puck to a teammate. And if someone's in your way, you can use a saucer pass to lift the puck off the ice. Subtle techniques like these will often allow you to get a better shot on goal. And you can now check players whenever you want just by using the right analog stick. When on defense, simply skate up to the player you wish to check and then tap the stick in his direction. Time it right and you can crush him into the boards. Of course, this tends to lead to fights, so be prepared for a right hook. There are a multitude of game modes to explore. You can jump right into the action in the Play Now mode or build a franchise in Dynasty mode. This incredibly deep option allows you to assume the dual role of both coach and general manager where you'll trade for the best players and lead your team to glory. NHL 2004 from Electronic Arts is an awesome hockey sim that's rivaled only by Sega's ESPN NHL Hockey 2K4. So let's get that puck into the net. He shoots, he scores! If you've been playing the cool expansion to Warcraft 3 on the PC, you know that this frozen throne can be tough to beat, especially if you can't see what's coming after you. Luckily, Cybernet is here to shed some light on this game, so grab a pen and jot down this cheat. Press enter during gameplay to display the message box. Then type in, I see dead people as one word. That's I, S, E, E, D, E, A, D, P, E, O, P, L, 
and eat. Now you're able to see the full map. That's right, no one will be able to launch a sneak attack on you. So enjoy and remember to keep watching Cybernet for more awesome tactics. Coming up, we take our fight to the streets, go on a fantastical saga, and explore the world of portable gaming. Derek's got a lot to say. See you later. Woman, too emotional. So what happens when his wife is replaced by her mother for a week? You've given me headaches. Derek! You've given me toothache. That's mine! And you've given me verrucas. What? Look, she lost to you, so I'm with it. Take my mother-in-law Tuesday, 9.45, ITV1. Really sorry, Miss Dean. No, it's okay, it's fine, don't worry. I, I didn't worry. know it was Donny Osmond's. Here, yeah, but where's my dressing room then? <laughs> this must be the one. This had better be the one. All the stars under one roof. The Royal Variety Performance 2003, Wednesday at 9, ITV1. There must be room for one more. Welcome back to part two of Cybernet. We begin the second half with a call to arms. An enemy army has taken over New York City and the Big Apple has become a police state. However, there are a brave few who refuse to live in tyranny. This is no time to back down, so let's join the revolution with the Freedom Fighters on the PC and all three consoles. This game takes an alternative timeline approach to history. It's set in a world where the Cold War is still raging and liberty is on the losing side. You play a plumber named Chris Stone. While fixing a customer's sink, he finds out the owner is a heroic leader who's taking on the evil conquering army. He suddenly finds himself joining a battle, fighting for freedom, and ultimately becoming a leader. Freedom Fighters is a squad-based third-person shooter, meaning most of the time you won't be in the battle alone. As you gain more combat experience, you'll be able to recruit fellow soldiers to the cause. You can command your soldiers to rush, protect, or retreat with a remarkably easy-to-use interface system. This immediately sets it apart from other, more complex tactical shooters. A map screen will give you several resistance targets that you'll need to take out. While you choose the order of these missions, some will have you acquire a weapon or tool from a previous level. This throws some strategy into the mix. There is a multiplayer mode that allows for up to four players to battle it out in a King of the Hill type game. But sadly, it's little more than an afterthought next to the compelling single player experience. We would have much preferred it if the developers spent the time working on more missions. In fact, our only complaint is that the game's too short. Freedom Fighters is an old-fashioned, adrenalized action shooter at heart. The story unfolds like a big-budget adventure film with enough ammo dispensing and pyrotechnics to make even Arnold Schwarzenegger blush. With its engrossing premise and smart gameplay, we have the feeling this is an explosive franchise in the making. We just can't get enough of that high-flying, motorcycle-riding craziness of freestyle metal acts on the PS2. But although we cover a lot of ground in this game, we still haven't gone everywhere until now. Grab a pen and jot down this cheat. At the code screen, type in universe. That's U N I V E R S and E. You see, you know it's gonna be the ace of spades, the ace of spades. 
Consider this code an all-access pass because you've just unlocked all the levels and all the events. That's right, go anywhere that these bikes and your skills can take you. Enjoy. Hang on tight, it's time for Cybernet's Top 10 GameCube Chart. At number 10, our favorite animated clay characters come to video game life in Wallace and Gromit Project Zoo. The Cold War just got a whole lot hotter. It's time to battle to safeguard sovereignty in Freedom Fighters at 9. At 8, speeding its way back to our game-playing roots, the world's fastest hedgehog is ahead of the pack in Sonic Mega Collection. He may be short, fat, and mean, but he's the only one who can save the planet. It's Wario World spinning into the 7th position. We love this blue guy so much, he's made it onto our list twice, this time in the 6th spot with Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut. At 5, Link continues to battle the bad guys as he fights his way through the Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. Swimming past the competition and avoiding sharks along the way, it's the little clownfish from Finding Nemo at 4. Next time you play Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2004 at 3, remember the old saying, drive for show, putt for dough. The world's most gregarious grapplers are ready to take center stage in WWE WrestleMania 19, body slamming to number 2. But none compare to the sword swinging action of Link and the other fighters from Soul Calibur 2, our GameCube number 1. While everyone loves playing games from the comfort of their home, sometimes we just don't have that luxury. Fortunately, taking our favorite pastime on the road is easier and more revolution is here. So join Team Cybernet for an inside look. Once dismissed as an inconsequential segment of the video game industry, portable gaming is now a huge part of the business. And without a doubt, the dominant handheld system is Nintendo's Game Boy Advance. It's currently the world's fastest selling game machine and for good reason. It's powered by a 32-bit processor, so games look as good as those first seen on the Super Nintendo console. Plus, the variety of games available for the GBA is astonishing. They include classic Nintendo favorites like The Legend of Zelda, blockbuster crossover hits like Harry Potter, and established franchises like Castlevania. Although wildly successful, the GBA did receive a few complaints from older gamers, so Nintendo created something a bit more stylish, and the result was the Game Boy Advance SP. Released earlier this year, the GBA SP features a sleek folding design and incorporates two major improvements, a built-in backlit screen and a rechargeable lithium-ion battery. Mostly, however, it just looks much cooler. For many players, the easiest way to game on the go is by simply turning on their mobile phone. Nearly all handsets include at least a few basic titles like Space Invaders or Tetris. However, publishers are also now releasing a vast assortment of surprisingly high-quality titles to entice hardcore gamers. These encompass all the best-known genres such as racing, sports, and action. And what's great is that many of these titles can be played over wireless networks. Plus, handset makers like Samsung, Sony Ericsson, and Toshiba are now designing technologically advanced phones to showcase these new games. Thumb phone models can even slide into a plastic shell to simulate a console control pad. In the boldest statement yet that wireless gaming is on the verge of becoming the next big thing, mobile phone giant Nokia recently released a game deck called the N-Gage. This innovative device is jam-packed with all kinds of electronic wizardry. Naturally, it's a phone, but it's also an MP3 digital music player, a stereo FM radio, and it allows you to surf the mobile internet. And of course, it plays games which come on these tiny cards. Most importantly, many major publishers like Activision, Eidos, Sega, and THQ are already developing titles for the system. 
As for specifications, the vertically oriented screen displays nearly PS1 quality 3D graphics with up to 4,000 colors. And you play using an 8-way directional controller along with a beveled keypad. At Nokia's E3 press conference in Los Angeles, they promoted their new gadget surrounded by a great deal of fanfare. They gave a multitude of demonstrations of various titles and also showed off wireless gameplay via Bluetooth technology. Even famed developer John Romero made an appearance to show his support. The N-Gage was released worldwide on October 7th amidst a tremendous publicity blitz. It's apparent that Nokia wants to be at the forefront of any time and any place gaming. Engage is really unlike any other product. It has no competitors. It's a totally new system, and it's really going to take gaming to the next level. This is the first of a new generation we're going to see in wireless multiplayer online gaming. Keep it tuned to Cybernet, and we'll let you know if the Engage lives up to the hype. For now, though, some gamers just can't wait to get their hands on it. I'm just so excited.